Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. I am excited. I have a special guest for you today. And uh, if you can remember all the information that I've been flooding you with as far as how to develop a mindfulness action plan, I thought that we would take a pause in the plan because now we are at the point where we're, we, we must put all of our intentions into actions. And often that is the part where we get stuck. You know, we may want to change our lifestyle. We may want to be uh, more positive, but life happens, things get in our path, and it's sometimes difficult to go over that, that bridge, over the mountain. And so I thought it'd be really great to bring a guest on the show and share his perspective on how he has, in his life, moved from intention to action. My special guest today is Howie Nestel. He has a profession, a pro, a passion for sharing, for motivating others, for teaching his profession. He's a professional marketer. Um, Howie has been, um, from from what I've read from his site, he's been all over the world, and he's he is uh, taking situations and motivating people who are at the bottom pit of despair and he helps them you just get a picture in your mind's eye of a of someone coming where you are at you're at a point where you think no one can help me and then someone like Harvey Nestel comes and says I got you covered I would like to welcome Harvey Nestel and he's going to share how making a difference in people's lives and bringing moving from intention to action. Howie, welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing. But first, before we get started, I would like to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing podcast to you. And thank you to my producers, Mary Lou and Sam, for making Transition Awareness Breathing podcast available to my listeners wherever they go. Well, Eartha, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. This is exciting. I know you're in your 130-something episode, so I'm, I'm happy to at least make the top 200. <laughs> I, um, I'm in my 50s, and if there was any one thing that I can take from life and pursuit of happiness is that happiness is not only a journey, but by definition, it requires progress. So in order to be happy, you have to be making progress. So before the pandemic, I was at my ideal weight. Then during the pandemic, I put on a few pounds. And then even though I didn't put on even half the pounds I had lost, I still felt down about it. But the minute I lost one pound again towards my original goal, then I started to feel happy because I was making progress. So even if I didn't gain all the weight I used to have, I still felt bad. Why is that? It's because there was no forward progress. And so this happens in life. This happens in business. If you're not learning, if you're not serving others, if you don't have a life of meaning, it's very hard to be happy. And so I'm not one of these people that walks around always smiling and always happy and always in a great mood. I do realize though that happiness comes from the inside. It comes through my own progress and my own effort. And sometimes 
when you share that vision with others and you give them a pathway to have progress and improvement in their lives, then they also become happy. So one of the things that you've been supportive of and so have many other friends of mine here in San Antonio is that they come out to a collection drive for the homeless that I've been doing now. Yesterday was the 26th annual. We collect anywhere from 50 to 65,000 pounds of donations of new and used clothing, non-perishable food items and toiletries for those least fortunate in our community. They go to a variety of shelters. And we do that all very organically. It's not a 501c3, no board of directors, no bank account. It's friends getting together to help collect these donations and take them to the people who need them most right here in our community. And what people tell me is that they feel very happy after they've done it. It's like, wow, what a meaningful Sunday. I said, now imagine what might have been the alternative. Stay home, eat Cheetos, watch Judge Judy, and then feel terrible about yourself on Monday. But yet... You come out for a few hours and you do this world of good for people who are not expecting it, but really welcome that hand up. And then that carries you forward for a week, but that's not going to carry you forward for a month or a quarter or a year. You have to do other things in this progress, in this pursuit of happiness. And it comes from the inside, but it also comes from serving others. It's kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It's, it's that self-actualization and trying to get to that top of the pyramid. Very hard to do when your basic needs aren't being met. However, every one of us has been in a position where we need a hand up. And then we have also been in a position where we can give a hand up. The problem is that many of us don't take that opportunity to give others a hand up because we're doing okay. And so we then focus on ourselves and then we don't worry about other people and then we don't think about it. And then we start noticing that our ideal self is no longer what we had envisioned and it's not enough. And we start looking outside of ourselves and we start blaming others. We start to live below the line and we say, well, it's because of the economy. It's because of the president. It's because of the laws. It's because I don't have the opportunity because of the color of my skin, because of my religion, because of my beliefs, because of where I was born or because my lack of intellectual prowess or because I didn't live on the right side of the tracks. And then you start making excuses and you live below the line. That's all great to give you an out but it doesn't make you happy. It makes you depressed. And so until you recognize that all those things, whether they're excuses or true facts, it doesn't matter because you still have to overcome those challenges. And at the end of the day, where do you wanna be at the end of your life? Looking back with regret or do you wanna say, I lived a life well lived? I tried my best, I served others, I was content, and it almost at that point doesn't matter how much money you've made, it's how much impact have you made. And the true measure of success and the most valuable currency there is, is the effect that you have on other people. And that's a legacy that you could actually enjoy while you're still alive money that you leave for a foundation or for others they're going to spend it in a way that i guarantee you wouldn't have done so but the impact that you have on others you can enjoy while you're doing it so right after the collection drive yesterday with a group of volunteers that you were a part of i went down to the shelters to unload these trucks full of donations and i unloaded them with residents of the battered women and children's shelter people that the food bank serves and then people that haven for hope the homeless shelter serves and they were so appreciative and so grateful and they couldn't believe how much really nice stuff was donated and i'm giving a hand up and now i get to carry that forward with me and i've had mentors people who've given me a hand up my uh, wife, kids, and I had a house fire in 2012, and a third of the house burnt down. The rest of it was smoke damaged. We stayed in a hotel starting the next day, and then, in essence, we were out of our house for about a year and a half. But I can tell you, a handful of people reached out day of, next day, 
in the week following the fire, all to give us a hand up. And I know they felt better about it. And I felt great. I felt loved and cared for that people were willing to come and give us some help. And I have to be man enough to accept that help. And a lot of us don't want to accept help. That's where these sayings come from. You know, it's uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? And so I think that's part of the happiness equation is that not only should you be helping and serving others, but you should also accept help because we're always in those two places. We need it in some areas of our lives, but we can also give it in other areas of our lives. Howie, you have brought into the conversation so much of what um, Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast is all about. Is but you go, you go, you are, you are like a living proof that this is very, very valuable. Um, I love how you mention um, you give people a hand up. You changed a a a common word where people use it negatively, and you make it positive, and that's a choice. And so, being positive is a choice. In all of your your dealings with the uh, community, is a choice. You know, no one is forcing you. You've made that conscious choice to give someone in the in the in the humankind world the kind the, you brought kindness back to humankind uh, that that good happy feeling is that oxytocin that I've shared with my uh, listeners is called the feel good hormone and so when you are doing something for someone or like you a lot of times people when they give people hugs they feel good because they get a hug that's the release of oxytocin but what is not known is that same hormone is stimulated when you help others. And so you're so right. There is such a pause and sometimes it's a freeze where I'm too afraid to help out. So how do you go from, because maybe you have the good in, intention, uh, but how do you, how do you go from, from your intentions to action. I, I understand the, the fear and, and I understand uh, um, sometimes our fear can, can freeze us from moving forward. How did you move forward? So addressing the question about fear of action and then how to move forward through it and persevere through it, it's easier said than done, right? There's t-shirts. I tell my kids, and I've actually asked this question to a group of entrepreneurs. You have five birds on a wire, three decide to leave, how many are left? And my kids and business people all say the same thing. Two. I said, no. Five. They said, no, you said three flew away. I said, there are five birds on a wire, three decided to leave, how many are left? So three made a decision. They just didn't take any action. So there are still five birds on that wire, except that three of them had made a decision to leave. They just hadn't flown away yet. My point with that is that we make decisions all day long. I am decided I'm going to lose weight. I decided I'm going to start working out every day. I decided I'm going to become vegetarian, <laughs> whatever it is that you decide you do. But if you take no action... It almost doesn't matter. Now, you might say, at least I took my first step of making a decision, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you get no benefit from that result because there are no results. So I like to think of the word decision as making an incision between what was and what will be. So from the point I make a decision, that means that I cut off from how I was in the past and what I'm going to do in the future. That to me is a decision. So I'm making a commitment and that means that I take action. Um, I will also tell you that while 
oxytocin is the feel-good hormone. There are things that happen neurologically, psychologically, and physically when you're doing something that really motivates you and really drives you that cannot be solely uh, responsible for a hormonal change. Because if you had told me that yesterday, instead of the collection drive, that I was going to go on a hike through a swamp for, uh, let's say, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. last night, so for 14 hours, I would have run out of energy within an hour or two, and I would have been complaining, etc. But yet, I was able to get five and a half hours of sleep, load up three box truck loads full of donations, be on my feet all day long, go and unload these three trucks, and still get home and go to another event for kids battling cancer last night and go to bed around midnight. So I was up on my feet. I was up on my feet doing work for physical work for 14 hours and then out at an event for another three and a half hours. So it wasn't only a hormonal or chemical change in my body, something was sending these signals to my body that I need to keep going. And I didn't feel tired once. Now, once I got home at 11 o'clock at night and showered and got in bed, I was out like a light bulb. But something was keeping me going. Something was keeping my entire body, my brain going. My focus was on what I was doing both at the collection drive and with these kids battling cancer at their Christmas party. So something happens and it's very hard to explain. Wow, this is so rich. Thank you, Howie. I'd just like for us to take a break right here and we'll end the first part of this episode. And I invite our listeners to come back to the next episode. Now, I would like to just to summarize some of the rich jewels that you have shared with our listeners. To move from intention to action. Howie, you mentioned that it requires progress. And you put it to make an incision from the past. I, as, as you were talking, Howie, a thought came into my mind, and I hope you don't mind me sharing my take, is we have to move past our regrets move past our excuses and move out of our spots and then be willing to groove with others by sharing kindness and compassion now may I invite us in to a mindfulness minute practice as we focus on releasing releasing and letting go of anything any thoughts that is holding us back from moving forward May I encourage you to take a breath in your nose and gently out your mouth, starting from the top of your head. Please pay attention to any pressures. Allow yourself to become aware of your now, of your body, and to 
adjust yourself into a comfortable position as we move forward letting go of pressure imagine in your mind's eye a leaf as it floats in a stream of water the beauty of the waves the beauty of the freedom of the leaf as it travels to new destinies breathing in your nose and blowing out your mouth release release the air let it go release any tension distractions and fears or might be your distractors release them let them flow you recognize them but they're not going to hold you back any pressures any pain let your body feel like ice cream let the muscles melt and relax end of exercise and take a cleansing breath in and blow it out and thank you so much for joining me come back again and join us Howie and Estelle and myself Eartha as we continue on with our episode how to move from intention to action have a great day be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's available now at Amazon.com. <laughs>